I know the last thing you want to hear is to stop stressing out because of your health. So I'm going to give you a unique approach to prevent stress from increasing your blood sugar. But first, I'm going to explain how stress affects your blood sugar and how it could be contributing to prediabetes and diabetes. I'm Julene Montgomery. I'm a holistic nutritionist, and I specialize in helping people reverse prediabetes, lose weight, and prevent getting type 2 diabetes. This video is part of the Prediabetes Drivers and Fixes series, so check out the other videos for more tips. Stress is part of life, but there are two kinds of stress, and they have very different impacts on blood sugar. Let's go through a couple of scenarios. The first one is you're walking along the sidewalk on your way to visit a friend. You step off the curb to cross the street, and all of a sudden you hear a loud screeching noise. You quickly look up to see a car out of control right headed towards you. Without even thinking, you throw your body to the side or you roll onto the grassy lawn of a nearby house. The out of control car whizzes by you, barely missing you and crashing into a parked car just 10 feet away from you. And you're safe. And what kept you safe was a huge rush of adrenaline, also known as epinephrine, that surged through your body at the exact moment you needed it. It caused a fight or flight reaction that provided instant energy. It also caused a release of glucose, which caused your blood sugar to increase quickly and dramatically. All of that helped you think and move quickly to get out of the way of that out of control car. In that instance, adrenaline acted as an acute stress hormone. After some time, your adrenaline will be processed and your body will calm down and your blood sugar will return to normal. But contrast that situation with this one. You're working at a job and you get a new boss and the new boss is demanding, impatient and verbally abusive. He berates you in front of coworkers and every time he walks by your desk, he impatiently asks, what are you working on? Each time you feel a tightening of your gut and a sense of frustration, embarrassment and anger, and you feel a little bit of sweat on your back. And as he walks away, you quickly return to your computer to resume work with an increased sense of urgency. The energy you felt in that situation was caused by another stress hormone, cortisol. Cortisol also causes a release of glucose, albeit a smaller amount, to give you energy to respond. It also increases your blood sugar. But because your boss comes by a couple of times a day, every day, means that your body responds similarly each time. It's not just a one-time stress response as with the speeding car situation. The cortisol release is what's known as a chronic stress response. And the problem with it is that glucose is being released and your blood sugar is going up every single time. This blood sugar increase occurs without ever eating a thing. Now, where does that glucose come from if it's not from food? your liver, where glucose is actually stored as something called glycogen. It's sort of a concentrated version of glucose for when you can't get it from food. Cortisol, just like adrenaline, can cause a sugar spike that gives you the energy boost you need to react to the stress. But when the stress continues day after day for weeks or months, that constant drip, drip, drip of glucose release acts just like food, as if you've eaten a cookie or a piece of cake, so I like to call it a stress cookie. How many stress cookies are you eating on a daily basis? This is the reason that some people can be diagnosed with prediabetes, even with a healthy diet. Stress cookies are that powerful. Now look, I understand the frustration when you hear someone say, you just have to get rid of the stress in your life. And sure, when the stress is emanating from something you can change, then yes, by all means, try to decrease that trigger. But so often stress is from sources that are difficult to change, a job, a coworker, the neighborhood you live in, etc. So I propose a different approach, and that is to create stress antidotes. In other words, identify specific counter agents to stress so that your body can come down from that stress cookie spike. A stress antidote means that you identify a specific activity or activities that counteract the stress you're experiencing. By rejuvenating, you encourage what's called the relaxation response. In the moment of rejuvenation, you feel relaxed. And by rejuvenating on a regular basis, you actually teach your body to respond in a relaxed manner, even when you're not doing the rejuvenation activity. And as you might have guessed, that cuts the cortisol response and there are fewer stress cookies. Now, here's the important part. You have to commit to rejuvenating every day. 
Now, everyone is different, so the key is finding an activity that works for you. And it needs to be specific, truly relaxing, and rejuvenating, and repeatable. So even though going on a trip to Hawaii is specific and truly relaxing, because of the expense, it's not really repeatable. But there are tons of things you can do, such as meditation, deep breathing, walking in nature. But it could also be something as easy as a bubble bath or putting together a puzzle. It doesn't have to be the same thing every day, but I do recommend you choose at least one thing that's rejuvenating every day. One more important thing here. I encourage people to not count exercise as their stress antidote, and here's why. Exercise is actually a mild stressor on the body. Now, it's one that ultimately makes the body stronger, but it's a stressor nonetheless. So by all means, still exercise. And you can check out my other video in this series for the best exercises for prediabetes and blood sugar control. But don't count exercise as your stress antidote. It's more effective to identify an antidote that doesn't produce any amount of stress. It needs to be counteracting, calming, and rejuvenating. Now, that's it for the effect of stress on blood sugar. Remember to check out my other videos in this series. And if this has been helpful, I'd sure appreciate a like and subscribe.